Okay, fine. I literally just mentioned the Fast and Furious guys, so it kind of makes sense that Vin Diesel kicks off today's list. Bloodshot was a film with a lot of promise, but it couldn't quite move audiences the way studio execs would have liked. But hey, that doesn't mean the movie's not worth your time. Just look at the final confrontation between Bloodshot and Dr. Harding. Now, you might be familiar with nanotech and Wolverine's healing abilities, but this dude over here can recover from total disintegration without even breaking a sweat. It's probably the deadliest Vin Diesel has ever looked in his entire life, and it ain't no joke. I kid you not. The scene was pretty badass and marked a satisfactory moment in an otherwise dull movie. I also feel bad for Guy Pearce. He always ends up playing some evil science guy who gets destroyed by his own fascinations. Don't believe me? Check out Iron Man 3 and Prometheus for some context. I told you I'd find you. Chloe Grace Moretz is a severely underrated actress. Honestly, don't know whether it's her agent or just plain bad luck. Like, she could have easily become as big as Zendaya or General Tiger, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Having said that, she did have a very entertaining role in Kick-Ass as Hit Girl, and I'm here to give her some flowers today on that one. First, I want to point out that her outfit looks like something made by a cosplay Batgirl fan, and it does really work in the context of the film. As far as the ambush scene is concerned, it can be described as a tale of two massacres. Hit Girl spares absolutely no mercy for any of the guards in front of her as she takes down two separate groups all by herself with the power of bullets. I think what really works here is that she's using weapons to defeat her opponents and not strength because let's face it, we all know how modern movies like to excessively exaggerate girl power. Over mother. I'm the point of emergence. The Eternals might not have been a good movie, but it looks a whole lot better if you just break it down into smaller parts. I've already showered praise upon characters like Icarus, but I just want to shout out Makari because her speed is just phenomenal. Just look at the scene where she runs towards the volcano in a sequence that accurately depicts what super speed is supposed to look like. Apart from the wonderful direction in this scene, we also get to see how fast Makari really is, and as per my calculations, she's covered more than 5,000 kilometers in a mere 14 seconds. That's god level stuff if you ask me. Of course, there's also the time she takes on Icarus using her powers, which is also worthy of its own entry, but I just felt compelled to give it a brief mention here. was an interesting film that made me see Scarlett Johansson in a different light. I mean, who knew Black Widow could be capable of superhuman powers? So, Lucy's abilities can be described by two separate scenes, both of which are worthy of God status. There's the corridor fight where she easily overpowers a gang of assassins using nothing but her brain, then there's the epic finale where she finally activates 100% of her brain power. It's pretty scary to see what happens here because the scene presents our own minds as a terrifying weapon which can't be comprehended even by us. The influence of 2001 A Space Odyssey is clear in the final sequence, and I think it works beautifully because of the visual effects. Forget 100%, if I could only use a meager fraction of my brain, I wouldn't have had to struggle so much during my time in college. <laughs> you 
didn't expect to see anything from the Incredibles now, did you? Well, let that be a lesson in taking me for granted. All right, now that I've flexed my ego, let's check out Dash's awesome running sequence. Since we're talking about God Mode scenes, I feel this clip must be here because Bro is literally running on water. That fits right into the whole idea of godliness, so you could even say that Dash was trying to channel his inner Jesus. What makes it so wholesome is the fact that Dash didn't even realize he was running on water until he looked down. Also, the kid just kept running like there was no tomorrow. I'm sure Tom Cruise would be proud of him. If I had that kind of power though, I'd probably just use it to run away from my problems. <laughs> there was ever a person worthy of being called a robot god, it has to be Optimus Prime. That dude's voice alone is more than enough to start its own cult. You die. The Transformers movie might have eventually receded into something like the Fast and Furious IP, but I'd still put it ahead in terms of spectacle. For reference, take the scene where Optimus drops into the battlefield and finishes off all his opponents along with Sentinel Prime's pillar. You know you're dealing with someone special when he's willing to sacrifice his own planet to save humanity. Now that I think about it, this somewhat mirrors the sequence in Man of Steel where Kal-El destroys the world engine. Considering this movie came out two years before, does that mean Superman is a fan of the Transformers? <laughs> Who would have guessed it? Okay, he might have been evil during this scene, but Nightcrawler is still a good guy, so I'm gonna count this as a superhero entry. I've already said absolutely everything there is to say about the White House invasion scene, but at the same time, I feel like I don't show enough of my appreciation to his teleportation powers. It might just seem like a neat trick to the uninformed, but Nightcrawler has sick control over his abilities, which is why I think he's worthy enough to be a top three god tier entry. It's not always about the overpowered punches or energy blasts, sometimes it's just about the craft. No, I'm serious, bro took down the entire White House security staff as if he was playing a game of tag. Come on, Mr. President. I'm sure you can hire better guards with the taxpayer's money, right? Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. There's God, then there are super gods, and then there are dudes who smash puny gods. The Hulk was probably the most dangerous MCU character until he was turned into a polite softie by a bunch of clueless writers. Anyway, I'm not gonna focus too much on that disaster of a project. I wanna talk about good things only. That means the epic Leviathan punch finds its way at number two on the list. All it takes for the angry green giant is one blow to take down a beast that's probably the size of, say, a small town? Now that's what I call a real god level flex. The entire sequence right from the transformation to the punch to the aftermath is literal perfection and I wouldn't have it any other way. It was stuff like this that made us fall in love with the MCU, not Megan Thee Stallion twerking next to a green CGI ogre. <laughs> takes a serious entry to overtake the Hulk, so I made sure to choose a scene that had all of our approval. Sophie Turner got a great start to her career with Game of Thrones, and news of her playing the younger Jean Grey was met with mostly positive feedback. While that might not have transitioned the way it should have into Dark Phoenix, we did get to see a cracker of a finale in X-Men Apocalypse.